In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of ordinary differential equations. And we're discussing different solution methods for initial value problems. And in particular, in this video, we're going to introduce numerical stability with specific application to the explicit Euler method. So this section on numerical stability uh, is based on the reference, um, the Moyne textbook called Fundamentals of Engineering Numerical Analysis. So uh, let's consider a differential equation, dx dt is equal to some function of x and t, or we can write this as x prime is equal to some function of x and t. And let's call this equation one. And let's consider a numerical method. In stability analysis, we want to seek the conditions so for example, h, the step size, for which the numerical solution remains bounded. So this means that it does not uh, grow unbounded or it does not blow up, as you may call it. And there are um, three primary options for our, our method. So we can have a stable numerical scheme. This is where the numerical solution does not grow unbounded for any choice of parameters such as the step size. We can have an unstable numerical scheme where the numerical solution grows unbounded for any choice of the parameters, and this type of scheme is not useful. Or we can have a conditionally stable numerical scheme where um, certain choices of the parameters, such as the step size, will allow us to find a numerical solution that remains bounded. So we will apply the stability analysis to a numerical method to determine its stability properly, properties. So basically, we want to determine which of these categories it belongs. So let's start with a two-dimensional Taylor series expansion of our function f of x and t about the point x0, t0. So this can be written as shown here. So f of x and t is equal to f of x0, t0 plus t minus t0 times partial f by partial t evaluated at x0, t0, plus par uh, x minus x0 times partial f by partial x evaluated at x0, t0, uh, etc. And we can see the second order term here as well. So now let's collect the linear terms, um, which are really just referring to the kind of first order terms. So we can rewrite this um, collecting the linear terms and expanding them out. And here the um, higher order terms are, are combined into this dot dot dot. So we also want to now um, rewrite this in a more compact form. So let's combine the constant terms and call them alpha 1. So f of x0, t0, um, t0 times partial f by partial t evaluated at x0, t0, and um, x0 times partial f by partial x evaluated at x0, t0. None of these quantities depend on x or t as they're evaluated at the point x0, t0. So let's combine those together and call them alpha 1. We can also set um, lambda is equal to partial f by partial x at x0, t0, and alpha 2 is equal to partial f by partial t at x0, t0. So then we can rewrite our expression here um, by again substituting in the differential equation so we know that x prime or partial or uh, df by dx is equal to f of x and t so we can write this basically we're putting this in to here and then combining these other um, expressions into these constants we can write this e expression as x prime is equal to lambda x plus alpha 1 plus alpha 2 t with the higher order terms um, appearing here, where these lambda alpha one and alpha two, you can see are constants. Now we want to uh, discard the nonlinear terms or the higher order terms on the right hand side um, to yield the linearization of this differential equation about x zero t zero. And for convenience and feasibility of the analytical treatment, uh, the stability analysis is usually just performed on the model problem which consists only of the first term in the right-hand side of the previous equation. So we just consider the problem x prime is equal to lambda x. Um, and discarding these other terms does not significantly affect um, 
the results in the stability analysis. So this is the model equation that we will apply for each of our methods um, when we want to understand the stability of these methods. Um, and it's, it can be noted that the model equation has an exponential solution. So in our treatment of the model problem, we, uh, we must allow this lambda to be complex, um, which allows us to consider oscillatory solutions. So in general, lambda is equal to the real part, lambda r, plus the imaginary part, um, i times lambda i. Um, and we also want to consider only when the real part is less than or equal to zero to ensure that the um, exact solution does not grow with t. So if lambda uh, r is less than or equal to zero, or less than zero, then the solution will decay with time. Um, and generalizing it this way allows us to apply the results of our analysis to not only single uh, different ordinary differential equations, but also systems of ordinary differential equations. And we can just look at kind of a, a quick example to illustrate this. So let's consider the second order ODE. Uh, x double prime plus omega squared x is equal to zero. So this is the second derivative of x with respect to t plus omega squared x is equal to zero. And um, the solution to this is that x is equal to c1 cos omega t plus c2 sine omega t. Now we can convert this uh, single second order differential equation into two first order uh, differential equations. And we will discuss this in more detail in um, a future section, but for now we'll just go through it as an example. So let's define a new variable x1 that is equal to x prime. Then we can say um, that we have these two uh, first order ODEs. So we said that x1 is equal, x prime is equal to x1, and if we take the derivative of that we can see that um, x1 prime is x1 double prime, we can uh, use this, this equation here to get our second equation. So x1 prime plus omega squared x is equal to zero. So this is also a first order uh, differential equation now. So now we have these two first order differential equations that represents, um, that are equivalent to our one second order ODE. So we can write this as a system of ODEs um, in matrix form. And we can call this matrix A. And if we go through the process and find its eigenvalues, we'll see that um, it has eigenvalues, which we can call lambda, or plus or minus i omega. Now we can diagonalize A with the matrix uh, of its eigenvectors, which we call S. So we can say that A is equal to S lambda s inverse, where uh, the big lambda is a diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues on the diagonal, and um, s is a matrix made of the eigenvectors. So for this problem, lambda is equal to um, the matrix shown here, so these were the eigenvalues, and s is the matrix shown here, so this is the first eigenvector and the second eigenvector. So this uh, diagonalization approach is a general um, approach from linear algebra, and you can uh, look at the, the link um, shown here if you are interested in the details. Um, I'm not going to go through a proof of this, but we can just verify for our specific case um, just to, to be sure um, that, that this works, just to kind of see how this works for our specific case. So what we said was that A can be written as this S lambda S inverse. So let's write this down here. So this is S. This is our lambda, which again was the matrix of our, um, with our eigenvalues on the diagonal. And then this is S inverse. So you, if you invert um, this, you'll, you'll get this matrix here. And we can perform this matrix multiplication. So um, first we multiply these two and bring uh, the one half out front. That gives us this matrix here. So now we want to multiply um, this S times this, which is equal to uh, this matrix here, which again is equal to A. So this relationship here holds. So using this approach can lead us to an uncoupled set of equations so that we can write as z prime is equal to lambda z, 
where z is equal to s inverse times this vector x and x1. So if we have this, z is equal to s inverse times um, this vector x and x1, we can take the derivative and say that z prime is equal to s inverse um, times this, the derivative here, so x prime and x1 prime. Because s is just made up of, of constants, it doesn't, um, it, we still just have it here as a, as a multiplier of our vector. And if we um, pre-multiply both sides by s, we can see that s z prime is equal to um, x prime x1 prime. So our original system of equations we called, um, we had x prime and x1 prime is equal to a times x and x1. Uh, we replaced a with s lambda s inverse. And now um, we can replace uh, this vector with s times z prime, and we can replace this with z. And then we can pre-multiply by s inverse, and we see that we get z prime is equal to lambda z, as we as we were, um, as we said here. And because lambda is a diagonal matrix, this system um, will provide an uncoupled, a set of uncoupled equations. Uh, and so this is really two first order uncoupled ODEs that are given as shown here. And so you can see that these are both in the form um, similar to the model equation where we have uh, z1 prime is equal to i omega z1 and z2 prime is equal to minus i omega z2. So these are written in the in this form of our model equation um, x prime is equal to lambda x. So this example just illustrates that higher order ODEs or systems of first order ODEs, ODEs can reduce to an uncoupled equations in the form of the model problem uh, with complex coefficients. So just to kind of demonstrate that our approach for stability analysis for a single ODE can um, be extended to systems of ODEs or higher order ODEs. Um, so these coefficients we said are complex and the imaginary part of the coefficient results in oscillatory solutions of the form e to the power um, plus or minus i omega t and the real part dictates whether the solution grows or decays. For our stability analysis, we will be concerned only with cases where lambda has a zero or negative real part to ensure that the um, exact solution uh, decays. So let's look at the stability analysis for the explicit Euler method. So we introduced the Euler method in uh, the previous um, lecture video, and we see that we can calculate x at time step i plus 1 from x at um, time step i plus the step size times um, f x i t i. So this is for, um, we can do this for a, a ordinary differential equation. Um, and if we apply this to the model problem where we define our ODE as x prime is equal to lambda x, this leads to the expression shown here. So x at time step i plus 1 is equal to x at i plus h times lambda xi. Where here, um, if we write our ODE in the form xi is equal to f of x and t, which means our f of x and t is just equal to lambda x. Um, so we can uh, factor out this xi here and say that xi plus 1 is equal to xi times 1 plus lambda h. So we can do this for the first few steps. So let's see, x1 is equal to x0 times 1 plus lambda h. x2 is equal to x1 times 1 plus lambda h. And we know what x1 is from here, so we can just plug all of this into here. Sorry, into here. And we see that um, x2 can be written as x0 times 1 plus lambda h squared. 
x3 is equal to x2 times 1 plus lambda h. And if we plug in um, this into x2, we can see that x3 is x0 times 1 plus lambda h cubed. So in general, the solution at time step n can be written as xn is equal to x0 times 1 plus lambda h to the power n. So for if lambda here is complex, then we can write it as um, lambda is equal to lambda r plus i lambda i. So xn is equal to x0 times 1 plus now our complex lambda times h to the power n which we can call, um, we can say that this is equal to x0 times sigma to, sigma to the power n, where sigma is equal to 1 plus lambda r h plus i lambda i h, and it's called the amplification factor. So the numerical solution is stable or re remains bounded as n becomes large if the absolute value of sigma is less than or equal to 1. So as you can see, um, if sigma is greater than 1, then the solution at each time step is going to grow with each iteration. So if sigma is less than 1, um, then our solution will remain bounded as n becomes large. And again, we can recall that the exact solution of the model problem um, is an exponential, so x is equal to x naught e to the power lambda t, which will decay for lambda less than 0 and will um, grow for lambda greater than 0. So if, if lambda, assuming lambda is real, if lambda real is less than zero, then the exact solution will decay. Um, so for the, the region of stability for the exact solution is um, the entire left half plane. So if we plot this, if we, we draw a plot that has um, the real part of lambda h on our x-axis and the imaginary part of lambda h on our y-axis, for any value of lambda that has a real part less than or equal to zero, the solution will decay. So that means that the, the solution will be stable, will not grow unbounded. For any value of, um, of lambda h in this left half plane. So this is the stability region for the exact solution. However, when we're considering um, a particular numerical method, we want to know the stability region for that method applied to the model problem. So um, only a portion of this plane is the region of stability for the Euler method. So for the Euler method, we said that sigma was equal to 1 plus lambda r h plus i lambda i h. And this method is going to be stable when sigma or the absolute value of sigma is less than 1. So for the, uh, for the stability region for the Euler method is, is really just the portion inside the circle defined um, as shown here. So if we, can, if we take the absolute value of sigma squared, um, we get the expression shown here, and we want to know where this stays, where the magnitude of sigma, sigma is going to stay less than 1. So this gives us this circle, which defines the stability region for the explicit Euler method. So for any value of lambda h in the left half plane and outside of this circle, the numerical solution will blow up while the exact solution decays. So if we have a real, um, a real sigma, or sorry, a real lambda that happens to have a value lambda times h out here, the solution will um, blow up. If instead we have a, a real lambda where the lambda times h is somewhere inside the circle, then the solution will remain stable, will remain bounded. So this means that the Euler method is conditionally stable. Uh, so to have a stu stable numerical solution, we must reduce the step size h to make sure that lambda h falls within this circle. So if lambda is real and negative, the maximum step size for stability um, can be found by looking at just the this expression. So it, again, here we're considering lambda being real and negative. Um, so 1 plus lambda h squared. We can expand that out, and we want to make sure that this is um, at most equal to 1. So we can just cancel these 1s out. 
and um, divide by lambda h, and we can see that h has to be less than or equal to 2 over the absolute value of lambda. So to get a stable solution with the explicit Euler method, the step size is limited to 2 over the absolute value of lambda for lambda being real and negative. Um, we can notice here that the circle is only tangent to the imaginary axis. So that means that the if we have only if we have no real part and only an imaginary part of our lambda, the Euler method is always unstable. So we will never be inside this circle if uh, if we have only imaginary or purely imaginary lambda. So for, for any step size, we can't choose an h that allows us to get into that circle. So this means that it does not work for oscillatory solutions using the explicit Euler method, where we have purely imaginary lambda. So if, if, uh, if we consider the case where lambda is real, um, and we recall that sigma is equal to 1 plus lambda h in this case, and we know that the miracle solution is unstable, then that means we must have the absolute value of 1 plus lambda h is greater than 1. So since lambda is um, negative in this case, um, it means that this whole expression, so if lambda is negative and the magnitude of this is greater than 1, then that means that the whole magnitude here, um, or this whole amount here, must be negative with a magnitude greater than 1. So for the explicit Euler method, we said that the method proceeds as shown here, so xn is equal to 1 plus lambda h to the power n times x0. This means that the numerical solution exhibits oscillations with the change of sign at every step if this quantity is negative with a magnitude greater than 1. And this uh, oscillatory behavior is usually a good indication of numerical instability. So let's look at an example. Uh, let's consider the, the ODE found here or shown here. So y prime is equal to 0.5y is equal to 0 with an initial condition that y at time 0 is equal to 1. And we want to solve this using um, the Euler method where t goes between 0 and 20. So let's, um, comparing this with the model, uh, model problem, which is y prime is equal to lambda y, or can be written as y prime minus lambda y is equal to zero, we see that the lambda here is real and negative because our um, equation was y prime plus 0.5 y is equal to zero. So that means that lambda is equal to um, negative 0.5. So with lambda equals negative 0.5, we can use the stability criterion to um, find out an h that would give us a stable solution. So h should be less than or equal to 2 over the absolute value of lambda, which in this case means that h should be less than or equal to 4. And we know um, as the how the Euler method proceeds, we said that y at step i plus 1 is equal to yi plus h times dy dt evaluated at um, the point i, so yi and ti. So for this case, we have that y at i plus 1 is equal to yi minus 0.5h times yi. So if h is equal to 1, we can plug our values in here and find, um, we know y0 as the initial condition, and we can find y1. So uh, y0 is equal to 1, um, we've got our h here is equal to 1, again y0 is equal to 1, so we find that y1 is equal to 0.5, and then we can use this to find y2, again plugging in um, 1 for the h, and so we see y2 is equal to 0 0.25. Now we can try this with h is equal to 4.2, so y1 is equal to y0 minus 0 0.5 h y0, again plugging in our values, so y0 is 1, h is 4.2, and y0 is 1, we get that uh, y1 is negative 1.1. We do the same thing to find y2, again using h is equal to 4.2, and we see that y2 is equal to 1.21. And we can proceed um, up to, to find the solution up to t equals 20 for each case. And this shows the solution here. So the black is the exact solution, 
The blue line is the Euler method with um, h is equal to 1, and the orange is the Euler method with h is equal to 4.2. So you can see that h is equal to, with h is equal to 1, the solution is stable, as we expected, and with h is equal to 4.2, the solution is unstable, as also as we expected. And you can see this oscillatory behavior when we use um, the, the larger time step uh, so it oscillates until and just continues to grow um, forever. So this illustrates um, the kind of stability analysis for the explicit Euler method.